What's good, 2K communities? Go ahead, jump right into it. So, what type of team captain are you? I know for me, for my team, I'm the team captain. Um, I pride myself on being the best player, both on and off the court. And what I mean by off the court is like when I'm communicating with my teammates, I always try to address them with a, some type of level of respect that they understand that at the end of the day, it is just a game. And if I do yell at them about anything, I'm just playing the game. You know, everybody's going to have a bad game every once in a while. It happens. All right, so this particular game, you're going to see Blaze have a bad game. It happens. Um, you cannot base a bad game really off of missing shots unless, like, that's what you're out there for. And Blaze is a sharpshooter, so he had a bad game. It happens. I have... Everybody's had a bad game, even myself. But, I mean, I probably have less of them than anybody. And that's just because I probably play the game more than anybody. But I still make mistakes. Everything I do as a team captain might not be correct. But as long as you can communicate to your team and they understand where you're coming from, that's all it's about. So if you're the type of team captain that can yell at your teammates, call them all out their name and everything, and that's how they respond and they play better, it's all for it. There's no right or wrong way to lead anybody. Um, I think now that we're in this particular generation, it's, it's time for us to stop believing that, oh, you have to talk to them in a calm manner and you got to be politically correct and all that. No, like, however your teammates respond to their leader and it works, that, that's how it's supposed to go. As long as that team understands where that person is coming from, no matter how he gets his point across, whether he yell it, whether he's calm about it, whether, you know, he might say something that's a little personal. If that's how you respond as a team, that's all that matters. All right? So when you're looking for a pro-am team, if you're the type of person that gets on the team and you start barking orders and you want the game to go a certain way and things like that, that's a good sign that you need to go ahead and start your own team, right? If you can't get along with whoever the team captain is, the one that's out there trying to orchestrate things or keeping people in line, if you're trying to tell him what to do and you're coming to a team, you need to go ahead and start your own team, right? There's nothing wrong with it. Like I said, people respond differently, but at the point you realize you're an alpha, you're an alpha personality, and you want things to be your way, go ahead and start your own team. All right, when your teammates mess up, address them in a way that allows you to express what you need to say and that they can comply and do what they're, you asking them to do. Now, if you get to a point where you didn't play on multiple teams and then you didn't charge your own thing and no matter what you did, it just didn't work, that's a sign that, that's when you need to change something about your character. I mean, something about your character is not producing a positive environment. All right, just because some negative things get thrown around does not make it a negative environment. Like I said, if that's how people respond, cool. The reason why you never want to get on your teammates in a negative way is the potential to lose them and the potential for them to underperform. So this particular game, like I said, Blaze has a bad game. He has a bad shooting game. This is not typical of the way he's played. Some of these shots he's used to knocking down, it, it happens. You know, nobody, he's not out there trying to miss open shots or nothing like that. And for me as the playmaker, it changes the way I want to play because, like, if I'm using him knocking down the shot and he's missing and I see he doesn't have it going, it forces me to force things a little bit more, be a little bit more aggressive trying to score the ball. But as the best player, you have to embrace that challenge every time out there. Right? So me, I prepare for these situations. If my teammates ain't got it going, I didn't play 1v1, 2v2, regular 2K with regular teams. Um, I played a franchise or a season or whatever it's called. Like, I, I didn't play every mode of 2K. So when I see these things happening, the way I like to respond to my team is, it's okay, just be ready to take the next shot. Because just because you're missing doesn't mean I can totally abandon my game plan. Yes, I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive trying to score, but I can't 
give up on you even if you're giving up on yourself. You know, as a team leader, you missing shots, yeah, it might be your fault, but the loss, I take the bulk of that. You know, every time we lose a game, I'd be like, I should have played better. You know, even though, even if I played and did everything perfectly, made every correct pass, played stellar defense and everything, at the end of the day, every time we lose, I look at myself like, what could I have done to prevent that outcome, even if I couldn't have done nothing at all? And that's, that's the toll I take as being the best player. You know, I'm going to put points on the board. I'm going to get people open. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do everything, but as a team leader, as the go-to guy, as the primary person that everybody depends on. How you respond in these situations tells a lot to your team about the type of captain that you are and whether they want to play with you long-term or not. So, like I said, in today's video, and by the way, I hope my teammates can all see this, purple and black, all right? You might catch me in all black if I do the black hoodie bandit thing, but purple and black, bro, I'm... I'm trying to do stuff with it. I'm actually trying to get you guys jerseys and t-shirts and stuff. But when I make these videos and we can be uniform, it, it, I really appreciate it. But how you respond in these situations tells a lot. So you see right here, we lost this game. You know, I had six points, three assists, two rebounds. Now we're going up against this stellar team that, you know, you clearly can tell they play a lot together. They all 99s. They be grinding together. I like I play a lot of 2K. Like I said, I play a lot of different modes. So my rank ain't as high as it would be if I just played one particular thing, or if I played all day with Randall. So that is what it is. But now it's time for Blaze to step up and play against this team right here. Because hell, they're gonna play better defense. They're gonna get more offensive rebounds. They're gonna have more play designs, they're gonna they're gonna be in sync. You can tell, look at their overalls, they're gonna be in sync. So if I would have went off on blades like, oh goddamn bro, you gotta make all them fucking shots. You gotta be fucking better than that. That's some bitch ass shit you just did. If, I, if I responded it to him in that way, and that's not how I normally do things, that could have derailed him and we could have gotten to a game like this to where now, the chemistry that we would normally have is shaky. All I tell my teammates every time, and I, I'm going to keep telling y'all this, if y'all have a bad game, it's okay. It's okay. I, I know the work you guys put in. All right? That's why I'm out here grinding with y'all, working on individual things to help y'all get better. So when we play team games, everybody be locked in. I, I know what it's like to be... I've been a sharpshooter on the team. I know what it's like to not have your shot going sometimes. It wasn't as, that often for me, but, like, it ain't that often for Blaze. Blaze rarely ever misses. You know, I know what it's like to not be able to guard somebody. Not saying, and, you know, Cap is a good defender, but I know when he's getting scored on, he hates it. I mean, I guard every best possible player. So when I go against somebody I can't guard, I know the feeling. Doesn't mean Cap ain't a good defender. He's a stellar defender. It happens. You know, if T will go against somebody he can't rebound against, or Reggie, we happen to go against some people that like we ain't got no answers for. It happens. But we gotta stay locked in together. And me being a team captain, I'ma communicate with y'all the same way I've been communicating with y'all. It's okay. It happens. Let's be better the next game. And I'm going to be better the next game. It just means the next game, if I score 20, I need to come score 40. You know, one game you make two shots, the next game you need to make 10. In the game after that, you need to make 10. In the game after that, you need to make 10. All right? It just means take that motivation. We're not going to win them all anyway. We're not. Take that motivation. Use it to get better, and as long as we're getting better, that's all I ever really care about. Because when it's time to play the top level teams and it's time to really lock in, we're gonna be prepared. We're gonna be prepared for every situation. You know, we gonna know what all our teammates are capable of. Everybody's gonna know what to do. Everybody's gonna know how to communicate. And everything's gonna run smooth. 
And if it don't, hell, as long as we gave our best effort, I'm proud of us at the end of the day. And for a team captain, somebody who's the best player in all of 2K, that's all I could ever ask for. I mean, I'm going to win more than I lose any goddamn way, no matter who I play with. So, hopefully, if you guys have listened to what I'm actually saying in this video is, it doesn't really matter how you communicate with your team when you're the team captain, as long as your teammates understand where you're coming from. If you're a hard-nosed person and they respond that way, cool. If you soft spoken and your teammate can get behind you, cool. There's no right or wrong way. There's no right or wrong thing to say. It's just however the people who fuck with you vibe with you through the wins and the losses. As long as the people behind you do that, I'm telling you, you'll go a long way with a lot of people. You can build lifetime friendships from playing video games. I know in other communities, some people have been best men at people's weddings just through video games. And it's because you connect on another level outside of your normal everyday thing to the point where the teammates that you have, they become a part of your normal everyday life as if you have known those guys your whole life. And that's a beautiful thing. There's nothing wrong with that. You're looking for a team, find a team that you find a captain that like you can get behind. If not, make your own team be the captain that you know you can be, and find a group of guys that's going to roll with you no matter what game it is. I don't care if it's Call of Duty, 2K, Madden, Fortnite, whatever. No matter what game it is, find that team that's going to always have your back and enjoy the journey that you're going to have with those guys, all right? Because that's at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, just the journey. It's not the destination. You know, the destination could be championships, or whatever it is for that particular game or sport or anything in life. But enjoy the journey that you have with the people while you have them. You know, because we all know friendships don't last forever. You know, people find new people to replace people every day. Enjoy what you have while you have it for as long as you have it for. All right, that's, that's a testament. I, like, to this day, I still miss Dynasty being on the team, but, like, I'm happy he found something that worked for him. But it, that doesn't diminish our friendship. So value the people that why you have them. And that would be enough. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. It's been Lito. I'll catch you in the next one. I'm out.